who are these two witnesses? There's endless debate and speculation. We're going to dig in, maybe uh, stir, th stir some things up today, but what, what these witnesses represent uh, for us as God's church, as his people today is really important. Revelation 11, 1 through 14. Then I was given a measuring rod, which was like a pole, and I was told, get up and measure God's temple, the altar, and those who worship there. But don't measure the court outside the temple. Leave that out, because it has been given to the nations, and they will trample the holy city underfoot for 42 months. And I will allow my two witnesses to prophesy for 1,260 days wearing mourning clothes. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. If anyone wants to hurt them, fire comes out of their mouths and burns up their enemies. So if anyone wants to hurt them, they have to be killed in this way. They have the power to close up the sky so that no rain will fall for as long as they prophesy. They also have the power over the waters to turn them into blood and to strike the earth with any plague as often as they wish. When they have finished their witnessing, the beast that comes up from the abyss will make war on them, gain victory over them, and kill them. Their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city that is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. And for three and a half days, members of the peoples, tribes, languages, and nations will look at their dead bodies, but they won't let their dead bodies be put in a tomb. Those who live on the earth will rejoice over them. They will celebrate and give each other gifts because of the two prophets had brought such pain to those who live on the earth. But after three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them. And they stood on their feet. Great fear came over those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven say to them, Come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud while their enemies watched them. At that hour, there was a great earthquake and a tenth of the city fell. Seven thousand people were killed by the earthquake and the rest were afraid and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second horror is over. The third horror is coming soon. We can only give a cursory look at this. I'm going to do a much deeper dive in, in a longer video. So watch out for that. But this uh, couple key things, there's this interesting image of measuring the temple and, and all of that imagery there. John is given this task to measure the temple, which happens several times in the Old Testament. Uh, and then there's these two witnesses here. So the temple uh, being measured are, uh, is a prophetic way of describing God is reestablishing his dwelling place. So the temple, this is a, a really a very symbolic spiritual meaning here. But the, the temple being measured out is a way of describing that God is both regathering his people that have been scattered, uh, kind of reestablishing his church and reestablishing his dwelling place. And so you see that in, for instance, Zechariah chapter 2, or in Ezekiel, there's a very long vision from chapters 40 all the way to 48 of measuring every single part of the temple. But both of these are images, uh, prophetic images of God reestablishing his people and his place on the earth. And then it goes from that into this, this very interesting symbol of these two witnesses, and I want to unpack that. One quick observational note, these numbers here are all basically synonyms, so think about it, 42 months is 162 days, which is three and a half years, and here we have three and a half days, but I, I think we're, we're kind of supposed to see all of these, he's using different actual numbers, but he's talking about the same time frame, essentially. Uh, and so who are these two witnesses? Uh, I don't think that we're supposed to see two actual human beings walking around. This is not reincarnation of some uh, of a prophet of old. Some people have talked about how uh, maybe this is Moses and Elijah reincarnated because, and we're supposed to think of Moses and Elijah because the things that they can do are exactly what Moses and Elijah did. The, the great the, the giver of the law in Moses and the great one of the greatest prophets of the Old Testament, Elijah, and they they did. They brought plague, they they you know, Moses turned water into blood, Elijah stopped the rain uh, during his time of prophecy, right? And so there's a lot of images here that clearly are recalling those two great figures of the Old Testament. Um, but I think that the the key to understand 
who these witnesses are is right here. They are the two olive trees and the two lampstands. So that is one, first a reference to Zechariah chapter 4. Uh, we'll get into that. But we've already seen the, the lampstands in Revelation. The lampstands are the churches. So I'm convinced that these two witnesses are a stand-in for the church. This is the people of God being his witnesses on the earth. And so in the sense that, that the imagery changed, but John was told to measure the temple, essentially God saying, my place is still here. I am reestablishing my dwelling place on earth. Uh, and then it goes straight from that into the witnesses. These are the, this is the actual makeup of the church. So the temple is the spiritual church reestablished on earth. And the, the two witnesses are, uh, is us. We are the church, the, the people of God now witnessing with the power of God, prophesying uh, of this good news that he has given us. In Zechariah chapter 4, the two olive trees and the two lampstands are described as the two anointed ones and that those were the the king of Israel and the high priest both of those by the New Testament become one person in Jesus himself and so again I'm skipping a lot I'm making a lot of inferences I'm gonna go a lot deeper in another video but the more I sit on all of these images here with the olive trees and the lampstands and the two anointed ones the king and priest that becomes Jesus himself uh, this is essentially a really ap apocalyptic, metaphorical, symbolic way for John to say what the Apostle Paul says elsewhere, that we are the body of Christ. Um, you might think, John, you could have said it a lot easier. We're the body of Christ. But he's writing this very intense, apocalyptic prophecy. And so instead of just saying the church is the body of Christ, he uses all of these Old Testament images and just brings it all together and says... This is the fulfillment of all of that in the sense that, so the church, so let's just think about this as the witnesses are the church witnessing in the world and the world is going to attack them. Those that live on the earth are going to rejoice when it looks like the church is dead. They're going to die and it, 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 there's going to be times when the church itself looks like it has cease to exist in a time or place or, or over the earth and the earth will rejoice but God will bring life to his church and the witnesses will rise again and continue uh, to give witness to God I'm gonna stop there because that's a lot to just take in and honestly I think these this last section is the linchpin for the entire book of Revelation so we're gonna do a whole new video for that <laughs>